Hello, welcome to Spink, where we're going to discuss some more coins. We've got several coin collections coming up um, at Spink this year. One of them from the academic collection of Lord Stuartby that we've already started to sell. We had the first sale in March. We have uh, the second part at the end of this month. And another collection, which is also a very academic collection, of Peter Woodhead. Peter is best known for the books that he produced. Um, he had a long life as a very distinguished numismatist, um, member of all the right societies, and uh, worked here at Spink a lot. Um, but he'll be most remembered for the three-volume catalogue of the Schneider collection. Probably the most thorough um, work that's been produced on a single collection of English coins. The three volumes available from Spink uh, by Peter Woodhead stand as a, a small monument to his scholarship. But his coin collection is quite remarkable. Several thousand coins of which we have chosen just 400 um, for this first sale. These are silver medieval European coins from France, um, the Netherlands, Germany, Spain and Italy. They cover the early Middle Ages from what was called the Dark Ages after the fall of the Roman Empire until the emergence of the modern uh, states in the 16th century. Peter was mostly interested in the small silver coins, the pennies, the denars, the deniers, the pfennigs. And he assembled a huge collection. We've selected about 400 lots for this first sale, um, and we will gradually disperse the rest in the course of the year. Rather like with Lord Stuart B, um, a series of sales, um, really because it's too much to go all at once. We've got a few examples here from the collection which I've pretty much pick, picked out at random, but they are all interesting coins. Um, when I say small, um, they go up to the testone size um, in the Italian coinage, um, the gro size in the Northern European. Um, and they manage to include in the designs a great variety of medieval symbols and designs. A lot of heraldic symbols, the eagle, for instance, features prominently, as does the lion, and a lot of religious symbols, um, as well as figures of bishops and saints. For example, here we have a very lovely coin, this is of Lorraine, Charles II of Lorraine, 1390s. And here is Charles standing in armor, sword and shield, full length, with great detail. You can see the links of the chain mail, and on the reverse, the standard cross with inscription. Um, by contrast, next to it, we have a coin of Metz. And here we have the standing figure, but instead of a secular ruler, it's the Bishop, Bishop Thierry de Bopart, and here he is in his uh, mitre, holding his crozier, blessing with his right hand. Um, two very medieval figures, and you put them side by side, and you see the secular ruler and the spiritual ruler, um, very much prominent on both their coins, on the reverse, almost identical, a cross with an inscription. And that was the, very much the standard um, appearance of the European silver coinage of the 13th or 14th centuries. If we go back earlier, and this is a German coin, um, if we go back just two centuries earlier, we have the most incredible uh, phenomenon, uh, I don't know how else to say it, of the large and beautifully detailed Bracteate coinages of Germany. And these Bracteates are very, very thin, wafer thin. And they're so thin that they're very fragile and therefore um, 
whole coins are much prized. Um, you frequently see them chipped and cracked and broken. Here we have a bracteat of Brandenburg in the name of Otto. That'll be Otto I, the uh, emperor, about 1170. And here we have a very uh, military figure, helmet, sword, holding a banner. Um, he is very much a soldier of Christ. Um, at this period, uh, parts of northern Europe were still being subdued, uh, to put it uh, one way. Um, and Otto was very uh, active. Um, but of course, at this period also, he was facing rebellions from peoples who had supposed to have been subdued already, uh, but they weren't. Um, so he was always fighting. And here he is in full armor, helmet, and sword. Um, but the beautiful thing about the Bracteas, they're so thin and delicate, and you turn them round, and it's exactly the same design, but in cuse. It's like a, a negative on a film, if you like. Exactly the same design, but the other way around. Remarkable. Very fragile, very lovely coins. As a contrast again, if we move down from Germany, go down to Italy, you get a very different style. You get a more um, almost emerging into the Renaissance style of the prince um, not in armor, in a soft velvet, probably hat, um, with a cape draped over his shoulder rather than the chain mail um, of the Emperor Otto. And this is Charles of Savoy. He's shouldering a sword over his shoulder to show that he's um, still a military leader. Um, but he's emerging out of the war-like um, Middle Ages into the Renaissance. Um, not that they were any less warlike, but uh, they like to give the appearance of being a more enlightened prince or ruler. We've got history in every coin. You could go around every one of these coins, and this is just one, two, three, five, six, seven. This is just eight out of the 400 that we've selected for the sale. Here we have a coin of Rhodes. Rhodes was um, a great fortress against the Muslims in the Eastern Mediterranean. And here we have Elion, the Villeneuve, um, kneeling before a very elaborate crucifix. Um, this is very typical of the crusading knights. Um, here we have a coin of Asti, back into Italy. Um, uh, a Tornesi a Grosso, Grosso Tornesi, and on the side around the cross, which would be the reverse, we've got um, the legends, and in, in there you see A-S-T-E-N-S-I-S, Astensis, the Latin for Asti, the commune of Asti. Uh, no ruler, because they were a commune, they were fiercely independent. The sale is well worth viewing. You'll be able to view it online. Every coin will be illustrated. Um, and some of them are really beautiful examples. They're not hugely expensive. You can buy medieval silver coins for um, a few hundred pounds, and you could buy bad examples for even less than 100 pounds. Um, so they're not expensive, but they are just full of history, full of interest, and very, very lovely to look at. You can view it online, and that's a very good way of enlarging and, and seeing all the detail. Or you're very welcome to come in and view the coins here at Spink. They're already numbered up, ready to go, and you can come and view them anytime. And we'd love to see you there. Um, the sale is Wednesday, the 29th, I think. Let me just check my facts. Wednesday, the 29th of June, starting at 10 o'clock. Um, see you there. Thank you very much.